Hi everybody! In this video we are going to learn how to make dynamic blocks in AutoCAD. As an intro, let's have a brief explanation about what they are. This is a block reference of a window projection in a floor plan. If I click on it, I can see the base point along with other groups created by me. The one at the right is an added parameter to change the length. It's very useful because now I just type the value for a new length. When I double click to edit the block, I can see that there is this symbol here, meaning that the block is dynamic. In other words, it has parameters with actions associated. So let's start from the beginning. For adding a new parameter, we need to use the Block Authorities palette. If you can't see it on the screen, you can enable it in this button here. I'm going to use a linear parameter for the distance. I click in the start point and then on the end point. This distance by itself doesn't do anything because I need to set an action. And as what I want to do here is stretching the window, I'm going to use stretch. First, I need to select the parameter, then the action point. This one, I specify the stretch frame. It's the area that I want to stretch. Then I select the objects. Press enter. I close the block and save changes. And now you can see how I can change the length. It's simple. So it's recommended to select the action on the other side of the base point, otherwise they would overlap each other. Let's go to the next example. Here I'm going to show you another parameter, flip. And that's what I have in this door. I can flip the opening by just clicking in these buttons. Open the block editor and then I'm going to start with this one in the middle. I click on flip and the reflection line will be in the middle distance between frames. I could draw a line here to use the midpoint, but let's do something we learned earlier in this tutorial. Click with the right button, go to Object Snap Overrides and then click on meet between two points. Select these two and then I can make the vertical reflection line here. Then I need an action to that parameter. And instead of going to the actions tab, I can also click in the exclamation point to add an action. And then for the objects, I select the line and the arc. So if I close the block editor, I can see the result. Then let's add another flip, but this time to switch the door down here. This time I go to action, I click on flip, select the flip state 2, this time I need to select everything. And if I close the block, you can see I have a new flip to the other side. In this door, there is also a stretch action to adapt the frame to different wall widths. So let's edit. It's again the linear parameter. Choose the two points of the dimension line, then double click in this yellow symbol Remember that when it shows up on the screen, it means there are no actions associated yet. There are four possibilities to linear parameters, so we add the stretch, then select the stretch frame, and I need to cover all this part, and for the objects, I select those here, and also at the left. I press enter, then I have to close the block editor, and you can see again the result of stretching a part of a block. The parameter alignment. 
This parameter can be useful to align a block along a line. For example, for electrical circuits, we want to align a socket automatically along a polyline. So let's see, and this parameter is actually very simple. We click on alignment, set the base point of alignment, which I want it to be here, in the middle. Then I need the direction of alignment, which is along this direction. Close the block to return to the main workspace. Then select the socket. Click on the alignment point, which is easy to recognize as it has a different shape, and move it to the polyline. Simple. Then there are some important tips you should know. I recommend you to have the mode nearest active, so you can put the block in any position of the polyline. If your object snap is off, the alignment will not work. Another tip is that the alignment will be to the other side of where you have the pointer. For example, if the pointer is just a little bit above the line, the alignment faces down. However, if you have the pointer down the line, the block is placed on the other side. I know that this is a bit tricky, but for that reason, we can also add flip states to the block to switch the direction easily. But, as we all already know, the things are never perfect in AutoCAD. At least, that's our beliefs, especially when the things are not working as we desire. For example, if you have text in a block and then you want to align it here, it's alright. But if it aligns to the opposite direction, you notice that everything is flipped over, including the text. So, in the case you want this socket to face the inner side of the polyline, the best is to place the block in this side and then use the grip to flip the direction. Yes, but make sure you don't have the system variable to mirror the text active. I mean, if you type mirror text in the command line, you can switch to one and then the text is also mirrored. Basically, if you don't want to mirror text, keep it zero. Visibility. This parameter is used to make variations on objects in a block and then display a list with different options to choose. I show to you this socket as an example. So, I'm going to convert a switch to to a block. Ah, and first, I'm going to draw a line here to use the midpoint as my base point. Then I turn on the command block, choose a name, select the objects, except the line I have just drawn, and finally specify the base point. So I converted the switch to to a block. Now let's go to the block editor. And here I'm going to add a visibility parameter. I can just put it wherever I want, because its location doesn't affect the performance of the objects. Also the visibility works with visibility states, which is a bit different than for the other parameters. If I double click here, it opens the window to manage those states. I can also access it in this button at the visibility panel. Let's continue. First, I can rename this current visibility state type socket1. Then, let's create a new one, socket2, and click on OK. Close the window. You can see that here I have the socket2 and as this state has exactly these objects, I leave it unchanged. Then I switch to socket 1 and here I don't want to show up the number 2. Click on it and then press this button at the visibility panel to make it invisible. Very good. Now I go back to the visibility state window and add a new state called socket 3. 
If you look at the bottom of this window, there are three options here. And now I tick the third option and this new state will be a copy of the current status, which is socket one. So I'm going to add a hatch object here. And first I draw a line. Then I activate hatch and fill all this area. Ah, I also want to change the pattern to a solid color and then fill the area here. And now that I am done, I press enter. Important, when you draw new objects here, they only go to the current status. For example, if I switch to the socket 1 or socket 2, the hatch is a bit transparent because it's invisible in those states. On the visibility panel, there is an icon, it's actually a system variable, to control how the invisible objects are shown. In the current mode, the invisible objects are transparent, so you can notice them. However, if you click in that button, you choose to not see them. When you finish, you can save the changes and quit the block editor, then click on the grip to choose the visibility state that you want to display. So, it's everything in this video. Thank you very much for watching this tutorial and don't forget to subscribe to Cadding Black to get easier access to all the content available in the channel. There are complete tutorials, step-by-step -step exercises and tips and tricks. So, see you next time!